Hello and welcome back once again to Infinite Jeff, the project where I, Jeff, read the book Infinite Jest to you, you internet people, whoever you might be. I read it one page at a time, one day at a time, although sometimes I take breaks and sometimes I cheat. <coughs> nice. But, uh, yeah, this is Infinite Jest, a book by David Foster Wallace, published 1996. And here we go with the end of this video phoning uh, section. This is page 151. Like that rum. Here we go. People view as so unattractive in one another. In other words, a return to oral only telephony because it became at the closed curve's end, a kind of status symbol of anti-vanity, such that only callers utterly, utterly lacking in self-awareness continued to use videophony and tableau, to say nothing of masks, and those these tacky effects similarly using people became ironic cultural symbols of tacky vain slavery to corporate PR and high-tech novelty, became the subsidized era's tacky equivalents of people with leisure suits, black velvet paintings, sweater vests for their poodles, electric zirconium jewelry, no coat lingua scrapers, and C. Most communications consumers put their tableau dioramas at the back of a knick-knack shelf and covered their cameras with standard black lens cap and now use their video phone consoles, little mass cooks, to hang these new little plasticine address and phone diaries, specially made with a little receptacle at the top of the binding for convenient hanging, from former mass cooks. Even then, of course, the bulk of U.S. consumers remained verifiably reluctant to leave home and teleputer and to interface personally, though this phenomenon's endurance can't be attributed to the video phony fad per se, and anyway, the new... Panagoraphobia served to open huge new entrepreneurial teleputerized markets for home shopping and delivery and didn't cause much industry concern. Here we have a section break. Um, I just want to say it's I think it's funny that he's projecting all these uh, yeah, the video phone stuff, but people are still writing down phone numbers like the video phone machine wouldn't just store the phone number like the mass cook becomes the hook for your little black book nobody nobody has a little black book anyway well, most people anyway wouldn't it's just it's it's it, it just interesting when you read stuff like this where it's like you were very forward thinking in a lot of ways but it just the it's like when you watch the jetsons and they're listening to like records but the record player is floating <laughs> it's uh but anyway um uh, all right, little half moon symbol. Here we go. Four times per annum in these chemically troubled times, the Organization of North American Nations Tennis Association's Juniors Division sends a young toxicologist with corn silk hair and a smooth wide button of a nose and a blue O N A N T A blazer to collect urine samples from any student at any accredited tennis academy ranked higher than number sixty-four continentally in his or her age division. Competitive junior tennis is meant to be good, clean fun. It's October in the year of the de uh, Depend Adult Undergarment. An impressive percentage of the kids at ETA are in their division's top 64. On urine sample day, the juniors form two long lines that trail out of the locker rooms and up the stairs and then run Agnet and Coed across the ETA Com Ad building lobby with its royal blue shag and hardwood paneling and a great glass cases of trophies and plaques takes about an hour to get from the middle of the line to your sex's locker room stall area, where either the blonde young toxicologist or, on the girl's side, a nurse whose severe widow's peak tops her square face with a sort of bisected forehead, dispenses a plastic cup with a pale green lid and a strip of white medical tape with a name and a monthly ranking on the 10-15 to 15 YDAU and NTA neatly printed in six point. All right, and that's a paragraph break on the end of the page, page 151, so that's... Anyway, some more tennis stuff. Yay. Uh, I sense, um, whichever one it is, Hal or Mario, whichever one's smoking the pot on the DL, he might get busted. We'll see. But, 
That's page 151. I bid you adieu.